Yes, we've seen quite a lot of this kind of thing lately, and a very pretty sight too. The more the merrier. These leads have been coming across in quite large numbers, and the question is, how do we count these mass formations on our CH stations? Do the same rules hold as for smaller numbers? Well, it really boils down to the old question of width and depth. Generally speaking, the more aircraft there are in a formation, the wider or deeper you'd expect the acre to be. Wider if the formation is flying like this, and deeper if it is flying like this. So that if you saw a really bumper echo like this, 15 miles wide and almost saturating as well, you'd be quite safe in saying 50 plus. Now this picture is a movie record of a mass raid on the 25th of August 1940. There were more than 80 aircraft and the formation looked like this, looking down on it. As you see, there are three layers First the bombers, and then two layers of fighters above that. And here they are, looking sideways. Now this coming over in layers is a favourite trick with the enemy. And quite often the layers are very close, or even one right above the other. So that the formation as a whole, as seen from your CH station, may be very closely packed. These types of large formations will give you a pretty deep echo, but it will be very narrow. After all, remember that the narrowest echo you can get usually covers a mile or two on the range scale, and you can crowd a very large number of aircraft into a mile or so. So here we are, faced once again with our old friend, the narrow, deep echo. Well, what are we going to do about it? Here's a clue. If your echo were coming from a formation of 6 or 12 aircraft, you'd expect a more or less sharp DF. But if it were coming from a much larger number, the aircraft might be sprung out, all at the same range from the station, like this. And as you see, theta isn't the same all over the formation. So that instead of getting a good sharp DF, you will only get a mean DF on the whole formation. Suppose in this diagram the bottom aircraft DFs at 180 and the top one at 200. Then your mean DF will be 190 and it will be a very flat one. When we get near the minimum, we can generally see the separate little blips. In fact, each blip will DF at a slightly different reading. If you want another check, try to get a height. You remember what we were saying a minute ago about this German habit of coming over in several layers or decks. All right. Now, say each deck is two or three thousand feet above the next, and the whole formation is flying towards us like this. Then you can see that all the aircraft are still pretty much at the same range, and we'll still get a narrow, deep echo. So a flat height theta might be a clue that you have a large formation in several decks. In any case, you should only use a flat height theta as a check on a flat DF, and not depend on it alone. And now, let's see what the air battle of Southampton, fought on the 26th of September 1940, looks like on our CRT. Here. Out at 80 miles is our narrow, deep echo, which looks like about 12 or so aircraft. Actually, there were 30 bombers at this time, circling and gathering their fighter escort for the attack. They flew across the channel in this formation. 30 bombers at 15,000 feet, with 30 fighters overhead at 18,000 feet. 
Here's the formation inside view. The bombers were JU-88s and the fighters ME-109s. Fifteen minutes later, here they are, in to 25 miles, and they've spread out a lot now. The echoes are growing bigger all the time. The first big formation has joined up with another formation of 30 hunkles, and there are more than 80 now, but they are still keeping in layers. They're coming in, still coming in, still coming The battle seems to be at its height now, and the echo has split up into a lot of separate sections. It's all over now, and here's what's left, going out home again. Well, well, I can count at least six separate aircraft getting away. <laughs>